Okay, so now we've talked about how you can use the marginal rate of substitution and the price ratio and the budget constraint to figure out how a consumer is going to maximize their utility given a budget constraint. Okay, but let's also look at how people change their behavior when exogenous variables change. Kind of like we did for the firms where we changed the prices of output or the labor or the capital. We could see how that led to a change in labor demand. Similarly, when we change prices or income, we can get a change in uh, demand for different consumer goods. In particular, let's examine the effect of an increase in the price of shelter on the demand for food, okay? So right now, we've got some price, and the amount of food this person is consuming is right there, F1. If the price of shelter goes up, we can model that by a down a rotation of this uh, budget constraint inward, okay? The amount of food they can afford if they only buy food is unchanged, but the amount of shelter they can buy if they only buy shelter goes down, and so we shift in. And what's interesting is that the impact on the demand for food is ambiguous, okay? It depends on the shape of the indifference curves. We could have an indifference curve that looks like this, in which case the demand for food would go up. Okay, so we could have food go up if the price of shelter goes up, but that's not the only option. Okay, let's instead draw an indifference curve that looks like, uh, where is it here? This. Okay. And now the amount of food demanded has gone down, okay? So the impact on food and shelter, or on the demand for food, is ambiguous. Why is that the case? Well, one way that we can see this is that there can, we can decompose the effect of this price change into two effects. One of those effects we call the substitution effect. And that means we shift spending to the uh, cheaper good. And I should say the relatively cheaper good. So if the price of food goes up, then relative, I'm sorry, if the price of shelter goes up, which is our example, then relative to shelter, food has gotten cheaper. But there's a second effect too called the income effect. And this has to do with the, uh, the observation that when the price of shelter went up, this person can now afford less food for any given amount of shelter. So for example, if this person continues to consume the same amount of shelter at this new price, they can't even afford it, and they can't afford any food either, okay? And so even though it's the price of shelter that's changed, it's kind of like they've lost income in general. So uh, the income effect is going to be for normal goods. You consume more when you have more income and less when you have less. So consume more if Y goes up is what I'm writing here because Y is uh, income less if Y goes down, okay? So let's do a little diagram to show how those effects um, vary and how they can kind of lead to the amount of food you desire going up or down, okay? The substitution effect is gonna shift food or shift consumption and spending towards food because it's relatively cheaper, and the income effect is gonna shift it away from both goods because we don't have as much money to spend, and that's gonna be lead to a reduction in food, and we'll see that either way, like it can go either way, and that's why you get this ambiguous result, okay? So if you wanna graphically draw the income and substitution effects, it's kind of a two-step process. So usually you're gonna, given sort of the original, so we'll call this U1, and then the final consumption bundle. So here's bundle one, food and shelter here. 
And we've got a person who shifts to something like bundle two, which gives them a utility U2. And in this case, it looks like the amount of food has slightly gone up. So to draw the impact of the substitution and the income effect, what we want to do is let's start with the substitution effect. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a third budget constraint. Uh, with the new prices, but the old utility. Okay, so this is the effect of prices on your consumption if it didn't affect your utility, okay? So what do I mean by that? Well, we need to draw the new prices and the old utility. So the old utility is U1, the new prices is this steeper line here. So we've got to draw a budget constraint that's parallel to this one but lets you still attain U1. So that was my best try to do it, okay? And you can see that where this point is tangent, this person is gonna, the movement from here to here is called the substitution effect. And you can see that we've fled from the expensive good shelter towards the cheap, relatively cheaper good food. So the amount of food consumed has gone up and the amount of shelter consumed has gone down due to the substitution effect. The income effect is the movement from one budget, uh, one indifference curve to another, okay? So this is move uh, from U1 to U2, but with the same prices, okay? So the prices here are the same uh, on this new third curve and the final budget uh, constraint and we jump from here to here this is like a reduction in our income and this movement is the income effect and you can see that the income effect involves a reduction in both the amount of shelter and the amount of food that this person consumes okay so the substitution effect increases the demand for food you can't see that let me draw a better one Sorry, this increases the demand for food. The income effect reduces it. And so depending on which is stronger, we can end up where we increase the amount of food we consume when the, when the price of shelter goes up or we decrease it, okay? So a decrease example is up here, all right? And so decomposing this in these ways is kind of a useful way to think about how people's uh, behavior can change when they have uh, different prices and it can change in kind of unexpected ways.